Tonight is September the 30th, 2019, and uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do about a video tonight is ask some questions. I um, haven't made any audio, vacuum tube audio amplifiers in some time now. I've been just playing around with amateur radio, and I'm still quite into it right now, and hopefully a gentleman's going to come over tomorrow and help me swap out a dipole for a hex beam, but we won't get into that project. This project... Uh, it's starting to burn in me again, and I want to build another audio amplifier, document it, have a lot of fun with it. But I want to know what you all want to see. What do you guys out there in the YouTube want to see? Here are a couple of absolutely magnificent transformers. These are uh, UTC, United Transformer Corp. These are called LS35s. They're rated at 35 watts. Look at the size of that thing. Now, I think they're supposed to be good from like oh, 07 hertz to uh, 35 kilohertz or something. We got a pair of those right here. Here's another one. I don't want to build a stereo amplifier. I started on that. I started laying both of these guys out just the other day on this right on this chassis right here. And uh, I just don't want to get into another big stereo amp. I don't need an amplifier. Okay, here's a power transformer. This is called an S40, I believe it is. Has multiple taps. Just a beautiful transformer for what have you. Um, here's a big transformer, power transformer. Yeah, this one and this one are, are power transformers. Um, I can use either one. This is rated 400 milliamps. I can use it into a full wave, a bridge, whatever. Same thing here. Get a lot of lot of voltage, a lot of current. Here's another magnificent output transformer. Look at this guy. It's 4,000 ohms. It says the power level is 65 watts and it's rated from 7 hertz to 50 kilohertz. It's a, uh, it's a triad, excuse me, S152A. So I thought I'd build something with that. Well, see, that's to make a UL amplifier. Actually, these are UL also, ultra linear. They have the screen taps. Magnificent stuff. Uh, chokes, I got all kinds of chokes. Here's chokes, there's chokes. Um, I want to build an amplifier. I want to have some fun with it. I want to build something that you guys are interested in. So here's another output transformer. This one's 50 watts, but it's a 10K primary. Now, here's kind of some of the yin and yang of, of these amplifiers. I personally uh, have, have a real love affair with triodes. Uh, <clears throat> but 300 Bs, well, they're magnificent if you want 15 watts. Well, 15 watts just doesn't... Uh, just doesn't get it with me, really. 35, 25 to 35 watts minimum. 100 watts is great. 500 watts is even more fun. A kilowatt, I don't need to go there again. I've already done that. I've got plenty of chassis. These are all brand new chassis of different sizes. I guess they're more up in the attic. Oh, here's something that I want your guys' opinion on. Now, this is a, um, a filament transformer. See, it's rated at, uh, it's got 150, it's got two 115 volt primaries, it's got two 12 volt secondaries. Well, what I did, as I said, you know, I need chokes that are at least four and 500 milliamps, and they're actually kind of hard to come by. Well, I measured the primary impedance of this at one and a half, uh, one and a half Henry's, or thereabouts. So I was just thinking about just using the primary of this as a, a choke. Do you guys know for sure, for real, if that's a grand idea or if that's a bad idea? Now what I did is I looked it up a little bit and found out what I could about it and somebody came up with the idea that oh that's going to saturate the core. Well, you know, you, you can't believe everything that you read. I don't know if it will or not. I don't think so. One and a half Henry's is enough. It'll, it'll do a marvelous job. If you don't use a choke, you'll end up with oh eight to ten, no more than ten more dB signal to noise ratio. But anything above 70 dB signal to noise, you don't hear it, not even on high efficiency speakers. These are uh, 10 Henry chokes, I believe. But see, this thing here's 10 Henry's at 200 milliamps. I mean, you know, that's not a tiny thing. This one is, I think, 10 Henry's at 150 milliamps. Oh, here it is, right here. No, it's 12 Henry's at 150 milliamps. Got a high voltage rating, two and a half kilovolts. You know, using uh, these old capacitors. I don't see anything wrong with them if they measure good. I, I like to use them. 
What are you guys' thoughts on reusing these old capacitors if they check good? You know, I've had a, a, a few comments lately that I've uh, replied to about, you know, every time a piece of equipment comes in that doesn't have new capacitors, it does not mean we need to swap them all out. That's just insane. That doesn't make sense. So I can build something with one of these guys. Have fun with that. Got a lot of other transformers too. I'm going to take you to another transformer stash. And uh, we're going to think about that. And uh, go with it. You know, this is one I built some time ago. I've probably shown it enough times. It's a lot of fun. I love the way it sounds. The EL34 is a 5U4, a couple of 6S episodes. It's a Williamson. I don't know if you can see anything underneath it. If it looks underneath, I even have a delay relay tube right over there. To let it warm up before it comes up. See, those are some store-bought uh, chokes there, but they're only 150 milliamps. And that's enough for a single channel, but it's not for stereo. And I'm really not interested in... Uh, and building a stereo amplifier that is a lot of work it's virtually double work okay let's go look at some other components and uh, see what would really be interesting to uh, all you guys in the YouTube community out there okay it's raining here so you might hear the pitter patter of rain on the roof here okay here's here's a completely different world do we want to build another amplifier like this? Uh, this is a pair of 813s. I think uh, this is one that I've built and shown before. I have lots and lots of views. People seem to have really liked it. Runs a pair of 813s. does about 500 watts. I don't want to build another 813 one. I got, already got one. <clears throat> but I might swap it out for a pair of 810s. These are the, uh, this is the output transformer. Uh, at one time I used it with a pair of... Uh, push-pull 3 400 Z's got over 1.2 kilowatts out of it I've got this one and I got another one down here just like it so I got a, I got a pair of those guys Do we want to build something like that now this one used the uh, Poseidon board 12 AX 12 a u7 uh, type driver which drove a, drives a pair of 6 L6's or 5881's which drives this uh, driver transformer and the driver transformer drives the uh, the grids it runs class AB1 no grid current I used uh, separate filament transformers, uh, for a transformer for each tube so that I could adjust the, um, the bias on each tube separately. There's bias adjustments there somewhere. Yeah, they're actually uh, over there. You can't see them right now. Okay, we want to build an amplifier like that, which ends up going in a, uh, a power supply cabinet like this. I have a couple of these types of cabinets that I've built the high voltage power supplies in. Uh, with multi-tap transformers, 500 milliamp chokes, you know, this one happens to be in a bridge with lots of capacitance. I can adjust the uh, voltages right here so I can get a, a range of voltages. So anyway, these are 19 inch racks, 19 inch across, and 17 inch chassis fit uh, 19 inch racks. So that's an easy one for me. The power supply is already built. So push-pull 810s could be fun. Uh, now here's some high voltage stuff. This, the high voltage stuff is what I ab absolutely love. Here's a 1850 volt 400 milliamp transformer and a swinging choke and a, a fixed choke. I'm just just busting at the seams to build something out of that. I started saying I'm just dying to build something out of that, but no, 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 no. I don't want to be dying. <laughs> Gotta have some sense of humor. Uh, Single-ended amplifiers. Would uh, would everybody in that watching my YouTube videos would you like to see some SE amplifiers? I'm not particularly fond of SE amplifiers. I've got to tell you that right now. They just don't catch my fancy. Um, I'll I'll draw you something here in just a minute, and I'll show you. Here's a couple of big output transformers. You know, all this stuff isn't 20 to 20 kilohertz. Uh, Macintosh or, or Acro Sound or UTC level transformers for output. Uh, got lots of power stuff. Thousand volts, half amp, uh, half amp chokes. So we got power supply components. I just don't know what to build. I want to build something that's fun, something fun to measure and document, and and something that. Uh, people would really be interested in but I don't know what that is I don't think I want to build any more kilowatt level amplifiers 
Uh, you know, I've got a lot of these little small things. You, you've seen these. I've posted these on YouTube. Here's a little Heath kit. Actually, I listened to that one back here. I'm not going to turn it up so that you hear any uh, audio out of it because if I play a little bit of music, YouTube will uh, send me a note telling me, you know, they'll do all kinds of things. You know, all of the credits have to go to the artist. I understand. It's okay. I just don't want to go there. And they'll censor it in some countries that doesn't have some sort of a agreement with the United States. Here's a couple of the uh, UTC W10s. Uh, I've, I've already posted one on that. Here's a power supply for one of them. You know, over, overkill is <laughs> is uh, putting it mildly, isn't it? Still got a couple of James Transformers here. Some of these grid chokes. Here's you know, some more. Lots of these beautiful UTC Transformers. I think these are LS57s. What to build? What to build? More blank chassis. What to build? Would you rather see uh, amplifiers that you are interested in building? Would you like to see EL34 6L6 amps? 807 type amps that you can find parts for pretty reasonably? Would you rather see uh, 300B SE amplifiers, maybe running a, these guys right here. I think they're rated at like 5 watts. Like I say, that really doesn't catch my fancy, but uh, the, the, the small SE amps. Or would you rather see uh, big guys like this? I, I don't know. Uh, let, let me draw something over here on the board and I'll, and I'll show you something. Let me clean this one off. Okay, let's have a short discussion of... Um, push-pull amplifiers versus uh, SE amplifiers. In a push-pull amplifier, the, uh, the second harmonic is naturally suppressed by the design. So if this is the fundamental, now this is a rough sketch, but this, this is just to make a point. If this is the fundamental, the second harmonic is usually pretty low, maybe even lower than that. It's way down there, and then the third harmonic oftentimes is higher than the second, and then the this would be second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. They're all in a descending order. And we think they sound great. Okay? An SE amplifier, I've measured a bunch of them. They look like this. This is the fundamental. This is the second. This is the third. The fourth, the fifth. That is the harmonic profile of a, a triangular waveform. See, so here's my poor example of a sine wave. There's my poor example of a triangular waveform. And there's just not much you can do about that. That's, the, that's what it looks like. So when you start measuring an SE amplifier and you see this harmonic profile, you go, whoa, what's, uh, hmm, maybe we should make that better. Well, maybe we should and maybe we shouldn't. Because, you know, we're all kind of brainwashed into thinking that everything's supposed to be 20 to 20 kilohertz at 0.1% THD and all that. Well, you know, there's a lot of other factors in there. There's damping factor and slew rate and, and IMD and I don't know how many things to think about right now. But the, the, the point of it is, is um, obviously THD is, is not the only factor because if it was, then real cheap uh, solid state amplifiers would be the best sounding amplifiers in the world. And they're generally not. And vacuum tube amplifiers would have gone kaput 75 years ago or whenever the transistor was invented. So we may actually like this sound right here. We may, it just may soothe our nerves and make us happy. With this one, it doesn't. Although this one is technically much better than that one. The point being is the vacuum tube amplifiers just inherently have some level of... Uh, of artifacts in them created by the amplifier itself. But I think we like it. And we certainly like it. We know this. This is without debate. We definitely like it in the creation of music and guitar music. Musicians like it. They like um, vacuum tube rectifiers in their power supply so they can have sag. And all of, uh, just all of the horrible things that somebody wanting to build the perfect amplifier would completely shy away from. Why would you want 40 or 50 volts drop across your rectifier when you can put solid state rectifiers in there to be a, a constant 0.7 volts? You know what I mean. So anyway, that is it for the night. 
So what shall it be that would be of great interest? I'm open to you guys' suggestions, you ladies and gentlemen out there. Uh, those, whatever I build, those that, uh, that I don't build for, please don't be upset with me. I'll do the best I can. Got lots of power, got lots of high voltage, uh, and whatever. Uh, my interest in amateur radio has been overwhelming lately. It still kind of is. But um, I'm interested in, uh, in building something that uh, might be of interest. Uh, if it's something fairly big, well, it'll probably be in this cabinet. If it's something brand new, it can be on a, on a completely new chassis, one channel. Again, triodes, you know, triodes like 811s, well, they're high mu triodes and they run class B. The low mu triodes like the 300B are great. They take a lot of negative bias and they take a lot of drive, so the Williamson type circuit doesn't produce enough uh, drive for them, so that's why we use uh, transformers and, and, and these these uh, uh, grid chokes or impedance drive chokes or whatever we want to call them. And uh, all of that is right here, so we can, we can do all of that. Give me your thoughts. I appreciate it, and thanks for watching. Stay safe.